Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. In the morning, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. I just want to have a shout out to all the ships to see, boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, and everybody else out there. Um, this is episode 333, recorded on Thursday, May 7th, 2015. Yeah, I had a little fun with the intro there. And if you don't know the reference, well, then you don't know the reference. All right, so um, anyway, so 333. We're having fun today. So, um, <laughs> I chose three different wines to do here and uh, had a phone call while we were doing that. So, I chose three different wines and the theme, the overriding theme here is the number three. Um, one of these wines I'm sure is going to be really good. The other two I don't know. So, um, we're going to have a little bit of fun here in the morning. All right, first wine. Let's just get started here. Uh, it is the Menage a Trois Chardonnay 2013 California, California. Bought this yesterday over at Total Wine and more. You know what I like Total Wine? Besides I got a lot of wine. As I can look up the wine and I can see, it, I get great information. They have a great website for just regular just information about wine. But I can see if it carry it at the store that I want to go to. San Antonio and Texas retailers, get on the ball. You need to have better infrastructure online. Um, I know it's going to cost a lot of money to get that inventory system set up initially, but once you got it set up, I'm telling you. Anyway, <coughs> and I love my friends at Specs, okay, but, um, you know, I like to be able to look something up and then go get it. Anyway, so uh, Menage a Trois. So we've done Menage a Trois before. We did the Cabernet. <coughs> I can't remember. We did the Cabernet or, or Pinot Noir. No, Cabernet. Something like that. So we're going to do the Chardonnay today. And uh, you know what? I want to say maybe I have done a Chardonnay already. Which if it is, this will be the first time I've repeated a wine on a different vintage. Anyway, so I bought it for uh, $8.99 at Total Wine. And um, California winemaker, they make a lot of wine, so a lot of value wine. Um, I'm looking it up on the site. She's just going to... There. I shouldn't have any red wine in the needle because I, you know, did the little ch, -ch before I started recording, but... I want to make sure. Ah, oh, it's kind of cool looking. You can see the little gas going through. This is the first white wine I've done, so. That's plenty of wine. Come on. That's good enough. All right. Oh, it was a, it was just a generic white wine. That's why I went with the Chardonnay. Because I was like, I know I didn't do Chardonnay. So it's just a generic white wine. So, um. Big winemaker, makes a lot of wine out of California. It's just a regular California thing. So, um, and I am tasting this um, regular room temperature, which right now in the house isn't too bad, but my part of the house is um, AC is out. And this is why I'm doing it in the morning um, instead of late at night. Plus well, now I got some wine. We're gonna have some wine for uh, lunch today. We're having some pasta. All right, so let's just get right into it. Uh, color wise, it's kind of hard to tell with how the lighting is in here, um, but if I hold it up, you know, straight ahead, you can see it's really deep gold, golden color. Can I coat the glass a little bit there? I did start the audio recording. That would suck if I hadn't. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. 
So on the nose, <clears throat> tropical fruit flavor, oh not flavor, tropical fruit aromas. I really get kind of like that mango, guava, pot, not pineapple necessarily. Maybe, now that I said it, now that I put in my head about pineapple. Cantaloupe, that type of stuff on the nose. Maybe golden apple. Maybe. Maybe a hint of creaminess or butteriness. I have no idea if they um, go some malolactic, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does. I think I took too much of a, of a mouthful of it. But you know what? It's an $8 bottle, a $9 bottle of Chardonnay. It's got some fruit forward characteristics to it. It's not quite sweet, like, you know, but there's, um, there's almost like a candy type of flavor to it, like fruit candy type of flavor to it. I mean, it's, it's drinkable, it's nine bucks, it's Chardonnay for nine dollars. Doesn't taste bad, it's just not like, it's not like changing my world type of Chardonnay. We already know Chardonnay and me are not always the best of friends and I have certain styles of Chardonnay I like. This is not a bad style of Chardonnay actually, but it's very flavorful. It's gonna be very appealing to a lot of people. This is what most people are gonna go, I want a Chardonnay and they're gonna drink this. Okay, chill it, it's gonna taste even better. So, the wine doesn't suck. Let's put it that way. All right, it's, it's um, for, for a $9 Chardonnay, it's, it's, it's correct quality. That's the best way to put it. I'm gonna say it's great quality, it's good, it's good quality. I mean, the quality's not, it's actually balanced. It's not too, it's not too, of, too much of anything. Um, it's tasty. So, I mean, you're not going to go wrong buying this wine at all if you like Chardonnay, especially in this type of style. You know, very fruit forward, um, very rich. That's a good word for it. It's very rich. but it's not the buttery popcorn, okay? It's, it's more fruit forward than, than buttery. So while there's probably some oak treatment and there's probably some malolactic going on, it may not be 100% or they may have controlled some of it. <clears throat> now they say tropical flavors, bright, crisp, fin yeah, I would say bright and crisp is, is a good Bright, I think, maybe not as crisp because I don't feel it has as much acid to it, but it's definitely bright. I would totally agree with it. I mean, it's it's a reasonable amount of, it's a, it's a reasonably priced bottle of wine. It's going to taste good. You're going to like it, especially when you get to the summer months. You're not going to do wrong with it for, you know, a bottle of Chardonnay that's nine bucks. It's also going to hold up to about any other $9 bottle of Chardonnay. Um, there's going to be slight flavor differences, but... If you like that flavor profile, especially the tropical fruits, um, I actually enjoy it. I really like it. I, I wouldn't say I, I like it. Like I would, I will probably finish drinking this wine with no problem. Whereas sometimes I, I finish wines only for the point of <clears throat> trying the wine and trying to ingrain that flavor profile in my head. Um, it's rare that I pour out wine, but I have poured out wine that I just didn't like, um, but I'm not going to drink. Um, this is wine that I will finish. I will finish it. It's not bad, nine bucks, it's, it's reasonable. All right, let's move on to, let's see if there's, 
Oh, yeah, Menage a Trois, your, your, your website, at least for me, sucks. I'm using Safari, and it says, confirm you're 21 years of age. I keep clicking the confirm button, and it never goes away. So, um... So let's talk about, uh, 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 I have some information about the wine. 52% of the grapes are from Monterey County, 40 from Santa Barbara County, and 8 from Indocino. They use French and American oak, so, and partial mallow. Ding, 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 ding. You are correct, sir. So it does go through some partial mallow. So, like I said, it's not overly creamy, but yeah. Man, I love it when I can, I love it when I can uh, pick these things out. It's a tasty wine. For nine bucks, you're not going to go wrong with it. All right, let's move on to wine number two. And actually, we're just going to kind of get this out of the way just because it's a big, bulky. It's still here in the shot. It's just kind of a big, bulky thing because we're going to go with a Trace Ojos. It's a screw cap. And I just bought this yesterday, so we know the screw cap can't have, like, un you know, come undone. <clears throat> so, Trace Ojos. The three eyes. So, um, again, three. It's a magic number. Um, so we went trois, tres, and then we'll go three. And that was on purpose, you know, having three different languages, like, you know, trying to figure out. It had to have, a, had to have some type of three associated with it in the name or with the vineyard or with the winery. But since, so like this is, the winery's name is Tres Ojos, all right? Just like Menage a Trois. Um, it's now, it's not named after three eyes or having the third eye or anything like that, though that's kind of what I thought it was going to be. So kind of like, woo, second half of the show. Um, so it's just named after a local bridge in the city of uh, Catalonia or Cataloud. I think I actually said it right, or pretty close, with three arches. Now, the old, you can barely see it on there, but I don't know, you can tell. You probably can't. But... The old label, or a label that they have, you can really see the bridge and the three arches. This one, you can kind of, this picture, you actually see all the tire bridge and the, all three arches. Whereas the other label, they just have a label, you see a, a bridge partially, and you see one full arch, and you see partially of the other two. But um, anyway, so three arches. The wine has red brick, has a brick red color, and... Oh, the wine. Never mind. I thought we were talking about the, the, the bridge. So this is a Garnacha. I'm sorry. Garnacha. Um, in Calaud, Catalonia. And uh, I paid $10.99 for it. So I'm looking forward to this wine. Wow. Like it didn't even go. Like the little things didn't do. Like it just pulled the whole thing off. I'm not going to say that's a first, but that's a rarity. All right, so let's get right into it. That's about all I have on the winery. Well, actually, let's, let's dump, though, going from red to, from white to red isn't usually too bad. Let me get a little, little coat of the glass. Been trying to remember to do that. More minerality driven than, than fruit driven on the nose. Just really smell a lot of alcohol. I mean, it's 14.5, it's not too terribly hot, but you know, it's a higher alcohol wine. Let's try, let's try to, well, one, let's do this. Let's see if I can, I mean, a lot of brambling, brambliness. So let's see. Maybe some red fruit. I almost want to say uh, cherry and strawberry. Yeah, like strawberry. Sometimes I, I've noticed if I hold my nose really higher up, like if you're kind of smelling a, um, a spirit, though I learned at Garrison Brothers, just what you want to do actually is put your nose here, open your mouth, and breathe in through your mouth. 
that way you're not like sucking everything up through your nose, but you're letting the you're letting the the alcohol get into your nose, and you're allowing you're allowing the air flow. So I guess a gentler way of smelling. So let's try that. <clears throat> well. I'm gonna say it was almost something like licorice and mint to that. Kind of minty. The room was kind of calming down a little bit, but it's still very brambly. Heavily tannic, really coats the mouth. I'd say high acid, or at least medium plus acid, lots of mouth watering. Um, very woodsy, feels like I just put my, you know, my mouth around a tree trunk. Um, so rustic, I think rustic is a good word to call it. It's very rustic. Um, as far as fruits, I don't really get a lot of fruit. I get a lot of wood, some spices, um, tobacco, leather. Now, now I think these are starting to come through. This is very earthy. There's not really a lot of fruit that I'm getting through. Now let's see what it says. Um, red raspberry, spice and white pepper. Spice and white pepper, absolutely white pepper. Um, I don't really get fruity. Now I get like a fuzzy tannin type of thing, like you feel like the you know the peach fuzz, like the outside of a peach, um, but you don't get peach flavor. But you get a little fuzziness, but I really don't get any fruit. Now again, let's, let's pour a little more. Let's just see if um, I'm going crazy. It feels like it's opening up a little bit more. It's not as brambly. It's softened up a little bit more. Um, there are some like red fruits. I mean, it's what do they say? Is it raspberry? Maybe, but red fruit. But it's still heavily um, rustic and leather and tobacco and spice, that kind of stuff. White pepper, um, brambly. It's 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 rustic, very rustic. Whoops. It's an $11 bottle of Garnacha um, from Spain. Um, it's not going to taste like a, a fruit bomb from California, okay? Um, it's very mineral driven, so that's, that, uh, that's good for that part. Um, it just feels, it feels too rustic for me, for my, for my taste. I know some people that would love this wine. So $11, this style of wine you like, you're not going to go wrong with it. Um, it's going to be a good bottle for you. It's it's uh, it's inexpensive. It's not an expensive bottle of wine. Um, I think I think if it let it breathe a little more. Um, I know it seems kind of silly to say you need to let an eleven dollar bottle of wine breathe and and let it soften, let the tannin soften a little bit, de decant it. I totally see you doing that, or just pour it in your glass and let it sit out for like 15, 20 minutes and let it, you know, let it kind of soften up a bit. But I think it needs a little bit of air. I think it needs. I think it needs a, I think it needs a little time out, outside the bottle to kind of evolve a little bit. And that's that's what I'm getting out of it. It's just it's really in your face right now and um, it needs food for sure. But yeah, I mean there's some good components to that that leather and that tar not tar but to, uh, tobacco and and leather um, something else too right now. But it's, you know, just a little bit more I mean, what it is is this wine is opening up and it's evolving and it's getting better over time. Like even right now, the the 
the nose is is feeling really soft. I'm getting now I'm starting to get more fruit to it. It is getting better and better and better. So I would recommend this wine. It needs a little time. You gotta open it up, let it open for a little bit, chill out, all that type of stuff. But it's a good wine. It's a good wine, especially for 12 bucks or 11 bucks, 11 bucks. I recommend it. All right. Now, let's see if I can. No, it's not gonna. It's all right, no big deal. Let's move on to wine number three. All right, wine number three. Now, I need to a little. Don't do it over the phone because the little, because it's pushing out the, the white wine or whatever wine you had in there before. You know, I figured out that a capsule could last me almost half a year if all I ever did was just use it on review wine and then once I decided I want to drink the wine, drink the whole bottle after that and pop the cork. It could almost last me half a year. Anyway, so third wine. This is the Ridge uh, Vineyards Three Valleys uh, 2011. Now I paid $23.99 for it and uh, at, whatchamacallit, at um, Total Wine and More. Now this is a combination of, um, they said this is their only non-single vineyard wine that they make. Now Ridge has been around for quite a while. I'm gonna go through the history real quick here. Now it began in 1885 when uh, Osea Perone, a doctor who was a prominent member of San Francisco's Italian community, Bought 180 acres near the top of Montebello Ridge. Now, this is not in this is not in Napa or Sonoma, even though their stuff's to Sonoma. Montebello Ridge is in now. I just had it is in Montesino, right? Two, 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 two. Is in the Santa Cruz Mountains, um, so near Monterey Bay. So, So they were growing wine in other places besides Napa and Sonoma way back in the 1800s, okay? So uh, anyway, get back to the history tab. In the 1940s, uh, William Short, a the theologian, bought the abandoned winery and vineyard just below the Perone property. Um, so they, they, the Montebello, Montebello um, Ridge, they terraced, the guy terraced it, the um, doctor, Peroni terraced it and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, getting all these little drops on there. I don't really need, I kind of need this to stay white. Um, so anyway, he bought, he bought the, uh, brought the property. And um, then from those vines, now called the Middle Vineyard, uh, owners Dave Benyon and his three partners, all Stanford Research Institute engineers, made a quarter barrel of a state cab. That Montebello cab was among California's finest wines of the era. Um, so they, they uh, the wines they made from the vines in 61 and 60 convinced the, the partners to rebond the winery in time for the 62 vintage. 64, they made their first Zinfandel um, farther down the ridge. Then, uh, then they went to Guyersville in 66 to make some Zinfandel. And the founding families reclaimed the Montebello terraces, increasing the vineyard size to from 15 to 45 acres. Working on weekends, they made wines of regional character and unprecedented intensity. In 68, production increased to just under 3,000 cases per year. And in 69, Paul Draper joined the partnership. Um, let's see here. And then they've added some more wineries or more vineyards along the way that are owned by them. So, other thing important about Ridge is they were part of the Judgment of Paris in 1976. So, um, on the red wine side, they were number one, two, three, four, they were fifth, ranked fifth. And then um, they redid this in 2006 
and Ridge came out on top. Um, same wine, same vintage, 1971 vintage for them. Um, they use the same vintages and everything. So they're, they're a winery that's, that's got some, you know, a lot of history, a lot of great winemaking behind them. So it's, it's definitely not, you know, uh, it's, it's an old, it's an old winery. All right, so, um, and they've got vineyards all over the place. So let's talk about the three valleys themselves. Um, so I'll just read the, uh, the explanation that's, that's on, the, on the back label. Uh, the only multi-vineyard wine comes from three of the finest Appalachians in Sonoma County. As with our single vineyard wines, the grapes are harvested by hand, fermented on native yeasts, and aged in small cooperage. Cool summer weather delayed ripening. Uh, we began, so in Sonoma, they also had a cool vintage. We began harvesting in mid-September, finishing in late October. We chose the most accessible lots from eight ranches for, two, for the 2011. Um, so anyway, now it says it's on the front label, which I love this about Ridge. It tells you exactly what it is. Um, so it's 65% Zinfandel, 20% Petite Syrah, 9% Carignan, 3% Mataro, which is also known as Movedra, uh, 2% Alicante Boucher, and 1% Grenache. And it's just a Sonoma County AVA because it comes from all over Sonoma. Let's coat the glass. Not too opaque. It's a little bit see-through. Good color, like real... It's almost the same red color as, as the uh, the tablecloth. Just a nice deep red color. Not deep, but just nice full red color. So on the nose, you get a little bit of vanilla. Some spices. Maybe some white pepper. Some fruit, red fruit. You know, I've noticed in the past the whole trick of like just put your put your nose in there and breathe in. I've had noticed that with the wine that I sometimes pick up some different things. Not too much different this time. Good stuff going on here. Structure-wise, tannins, um, pretty full tannins. Like I would call it medium plus. And granted, this is the first. This is the first taste. So sometimes after second taste, it, it gets a little bit better. It's a creaminess to it. Um, a, what I call the pie aspect. Like like like. So it's got fruit pie. Um, so you got the cream. You got the whipped cream. You got the fruit. You got the the bakery type of you know the the crust. Um, I would call it like a combination of cherry and raspberry. Um, I don't think I really get anything strawberry wise, and um, you know other other red fruits. I don't really think I would I would characterize that. It's a bit of fuzziness to it. Maybe a little bit of leather, um, a little bit of bramble, a little bit of wood to it, um, some spices. I think I've already said that. It's got a lot of stuff to it. I mean, I think it's really nice. Um, let's see what they call, let's see what they say in their uh, tasting this garnet color, briar fruit, dried herbs, clay earth, mm, sweet oak, okay, fresh raspberry and cherry, moderate acid, round tannin, savory oak spice, medium body, lively finish. That's probably about right. I mean, like I said, we all get a little bit different things here and there, but I got the I got the basics of what they were going for. Um, I think it's really really nice. They even have video on here, huh? I'll have to watch that video later. Maybe I'll maybe I'll insert it. I don't know. I don't know what their usage rights are. Um, I probably should have looked at that before. But uh, uh, see, the first 
Ridge. Oh, that was in 2001. Let's see if there's anything else in here to note. Um, it says, I thought I saw some malolactic in here. No inoculation, blah, 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 um, which means they just let it naturally happen. A full natural malolactic to soften acidity, press to six days on average. 100% air dried American oak barrels, 20% one to two years old, 70% three, four to five years old, aged for 12 months in barrel. It's tasty. I mean, it's for 24 bucks, it's a good value. I mean, it's, this is the why. I mean, we're gonna have impasta later, and I, I'm kind of undecided which wine I wanna try. Besides all the other wines I have, a, you know, opened with a, um, with a Corvin. I mean, granted, I probably should drink this one pretty quickly, the Ojos, because there's no, it's, it's a screwed cap. Um, these, at least I can hold on. You know, the Yara, I'm not sure about. That was from last week. Um, it's a really good wine. I totally, totally recommend it. Anyway, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this episode with three different wines with um, episode 333. Um, it is a magic number, and uh, you'll see it just like, you know, it's like that movie 23. You see the you know, you, the guy saw 23 everywhere. You know it's 33 and 3. Well, 3 is real easy. But you know it's 33 a lot everywhere, too. Um, so anyway, uh, we got 33 in the name of the... I just thought about I got two threes in the name of my, my thing here. Um, even though I don't say 1337. 1337 wine. So um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to... Uh, find out more information. You can uh, hit the uh, PayPal button, send me a few ducats. Um, there was a little jingle I was going to try to sing, but that's not going to work out. I'll mess it up. Anyway, um, so if you want to donate to the best wine podcast in the universe, click that button. And uh, thank you for stopping by. We will see everyone again next time.